Um, so um, here, here's a here's a problem that I don't think I can have a, com a good conversation with um, with a lot of people, but I think I think uh, it'd be great to have it with you, which is um, in 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 uh, in in, co in uh, voice bot to human, you know, exchanges. It's called in dialogues, as you as you uh, use the word. Um, these dialogues, I think, one of the most frustrating things about um, about these smart speakers, uh, whether it's the Echo, whether it's uh, Google Home, um, when you're when you're engaging with them, is is um, let's call it conversational turn end pointing, knowing when you're done talking um, and not using say silence for knowing. Like for example, right now, see that I'm you know I'm pausing, but you know that I'm not done because. You know, I haven't finished the sentence. I'm still articulating my my thoughts. Whereas when you engage with the you know with the Echo or with Google Home, um, it, the bottleneck is in. It's not very smart about knowing when you're done with your request, right? That's one of the biggest bottlenecks. I think. I think if if that if that skill or that capability was was much better. I think we would have better dialogues, you know, we'll do more back and forth. But one of the reasons why we don't do those back and forth is just, it's not good. It, it thinks that you're done. And then it has been seven years since the Echo was launched. And I would have thought that by now they would have solved that problem. But they have not. Uh, I don't see they have, I think they have made zero progress, maybe very, very little progress. What Have you thought about this uh, much like dialogue? The turn and Absolutely. It's, uh, and, and I uh, agree. It's a very tough problem. Yeah. Um, but. The core issue in that problem is turn taking. Yeah. How do you know whose turn it is? And how do you know who should have the turn in a conversation? And specifically, how do you interrupt someone that's going in a different direction and take the turn back? And Alexa's got a very clever solution to the fact that it's a half duplex channel and that mm -hmm. there are latencies associated with sending the speech up to the mm -hmm. cloud and getting it back down. Um, and that is by having the local attention word inside the black box, the, the tin can that's sitting on your counter. Mm -hmm. It only recognizes the word Alexa, but that's enough to open the channel and send uh, the uh, information to the cloud that the user now wants to do something. The user has launched the conversation, always starting it with this token called Alexa. Mm -hmm. So you know how the dialogue began very, very reliably. Once that machine knows what the request is and starts beaming information back, the user is helpless. You can't have a conversation with Alexa because she can't hear you while she's talking. She mm -hmm. can only hear you say Alexa. Mm -hmm. And that confuses the nature of the turn taking because it's really a half duplex interface, not a full duplex interface. Yeah. Yep. Then voice bots that are in call center cheat a little bit because they can have a full duplex interface in the sense that barge in allows the user to interrupt the machine. The problem with barge in though is that as soon as the machine hears the user start talking, it immediately stops talking. Mm -hmm. And that's not very good full duplex turn taking. Good example is the user just there's a background noise or some other thing. The machine's in the process of reading you a number. So here's your product ID number. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And it stops because the user made a noise. Now there's no more noise. So it takes the turn back and says, is that number correct? Mm -hmm. And the user goes, I didn't hear the number. You know, what, what happened? And it comes back and says, I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. And now yeah, you're you in go. this error amplification loop. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and and that's when all of a sudden it's the death of a thousand cuts. Right. We have to start at the bottom level and define the turn-taking protocol and recognize that it's going to be artificial for the foreseeable future. Making it full duplex doesn't solve problems. It just changes your problems to new problems. What we really need technologically is the ability for the machine to recognize the user while the machine is presenting voice and not stop the voice when it hears the user, but stop the voice when it knows that the user, when it's recognized some of what the user is saying and can distinguish that from noise. And then intelligently at a turn taking juncture, turn the turn back over to the user, knowing you have to put a little um, index card in what you were saying to know how to synchronize your output 
with this incoming uh, speech. And nobody knows how to do that yet. Yeah. And it's not a problem that people are really focusing on. I read lots of papers, academic papers, about all of the complexities of this turn-taking problem between humans, human to human. But when it goes human to machine, there's a whole new set of issues. And machine learning won't help us because we don't have any examples to use data for the machine to learn. Because there are no examples of a human and a machine taking turns in a full duplex interface effectively. All we have yeah. is human to human data. So the yep. machine is going to learn the wrong thing. True, true. Um, actually, I was thinking about this. Uh, the problem you described is uh, definitely a very hot problem. And I, I think it's going to take a while to get there. But I think the lower fruit, lower hanging fruit problem is the one where um, it's my turn. I'm talking, right? Um, you know, the voice bot is listening. Um, and then just having the voice bot be smart enough to know when I'm not I'm done and when I'm not done, right? So that, for example, today, I think it relies uh, quite a bit on whether you're saying something that makes sense or not. For example, I tested the echo. And uh, and so I, I did something like, I want to know what time does um, the, and then it interrupts, right? But if I say, I want to know what time, 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 like I'm stuttering, time, 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 the post office, it doesn't, it doesn't interrupt me, it waits, right? So mm -hmm. it seems, I'm reverse engineering in my head, it seems that the signal is coming, so this is a word, this is a word, he's still talking, the word, the word, the word, the word, the word, word, is, yep, no, no, okay, well, let's see, let's take this, okay, there's a lot of time, let's just click, and then, okay, he's asking about the post office, right? Whereas, so, um, but that's not how I talk. What I, the way I talk is, I want to know what time is the mm, is uh, the post office, right? Um, that's mm -hmm. how I talk. That's how most people talk when when they talk naturally, as opposed to, all right, I'm gonna take a deep breath. I'm gonna ask this thing, the post office. Okay, I rehearsed in my head. Alexa, what time is the post office open? That's not how we talk, right? That doesn't um, happen. Yeah, <laughs> as you as you know, Jonathan Bloom gave a very good talk. Yeah, uh, for LinguaFest on what is natural language, right? Does right. it mean these complete sentences with all the no. information? I no. want to fly it from Detroit to Michigan at three o'clock in the afternoon on April the 17th that costs less than three thousand dollars. Nobody know? does that, yeah, nobody, nobody talks that nobody, way. Nobody does what that. they do exactly. is they launch their desire, right? And then the listener walks them through the, the yes, uh, what do you need to know for, for me to get what right. I need done? Exactly. Um, a exactly. classic example would be a machine that could evaluate and ask a patient about their symptoms based on the symptoms they've already discussed. That could be very useful in terms yeah. of uh, front ending a physician or a clinic visit um, intelligently with a expert system database that keeps yep. track of related symptoms, knows the patient's medication schedule, et cetera, and therefore can ask just the right question. Have you yep. been having headaches? Are the headaches on the right side of your head? Yes, and you just recently had that surgery on your, on your eye. Uh, tell me a little bit about this part or that part. Yeah. Exploring with the user, and the user is like, well, I never even thought to mention that, but yeah, now that you mention it, I do have a headache on the yeah. right side. Um, and as a result, now you've got intelligent collaboration between human user and bot. And the intelligence of the collaboration is not in the speech technology. Yes, we used machine learning to build the acoustic phonetic models. Yes, that is AI. But the actual use of the word intelligent to most end users is the intelligence of the application itself, applying intelligent decision making with lots and lots of different paths to, in the case of the airline thing, is um, eliminating choices. Um, in order to work down to the negotiate yeah. the correct flight at the at the time and be able to suggest things. You know, if you left a day earlier, it would cost less. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. What do you got? You know, that's where you need conversation to intelligently collaborate with a, exactly. a large exactly. quantity of information. And, and what's I'd frustrating? Yeah. Like that. What's, what's frustrating is that uh, this problem seems to me the problem of knowing, you know, there are also problems with this one, knowing when the user has stopped talking, right? Mm -hmm. It seems to me that that is an eminently solvable problem, 
right? It's it's much easier than the problem of interrupting and all that. But just I think the cues are um, are what um, is this is this is this grammatically and semantically whole, right? Or are they or not, right? Mm -hmm. Are they are they using the usual? You know, like you said, right? We don't have a lot of tricks actually to signal stuff in the conversations. Like, mm, uh, if I want to return it, uh, if I want to retain the turn, I will. Uh, I will not go silent, right? Unless we are friends, long time friends, and we understand what the pause means and all. But if I'm just transacting with you, I'm going to signal that I'm not done with some with a handful of signals, really, right? Intonation, right? Th that it's not grammatically complete. That I'm rephrasing, perhaps. Um, I'm using these uh, these fluencies and all. And it and so it's it's really puzzling to me that they have not solved that, they being Google and Amazon, they have not solved that problem when, in fact, it is not a trivial problem. It's coming in the way of building a lot of good experiences <clears throat> like the ones you were describing, right? Um, yeah. if, if in the middle, think about it, if in the middle of an exchange, this thing just says, I don't understand, well, oh, screw that, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna waste my time talking to you. I'm gonna go to my brow web browser, you know, control T, and I'm gonna go and search for symptoms and all that. I'm not gonna talk to you. Because you can't even hold a little dialogue, right? You interrupt me in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Right. It goes and back so it's to that comment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It goes back to the launching and directedness. That's one reason why user launched, machine directed dialogues are more effective, because the machine possesses the knowledge that the user needs. Therefore, the machine can drive the user forward with yes. a specific series of chunks of information. Right. When the user is finished talking, is determined by the data they deliver. You yeah. know. When the user gives me a complete date for their flight, that's when they're finished talking. And and the, I then can look that up chica, 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 and come back with additional questions. You know, no, we don't have one at this time. How about this time? Um, and then what we're doing is batting the ball back and forth. Roger Moore calls this the tennis match model of turn taking. Mm -hmm. Batting the ball back and forth is not nearly as fun or natural, but it's very effective and productive. Yeah. And so the tennis match model of in interacting today is, is the best model and we should be refining it. And the argument about how to do, he, he correlates intelligent turn taking with a three legged race. If you're familiar with mm -hmm. tying the right leg to another person's left mm -hmm. leg, mm -hmm. now you've got to cooperate in order yep. to be able to walk. That's the cooperation or collaboration, very intelligent, much harder interface to build we're still at the basic research stage for voice bots um, uh, working that way. But we're at the fully mature stage with um, the tennis match model. And all we have to do is apply it in better ways than um, food ordering. It's really funny. Um, the speech industry has been developing pizza ordering applications. <laughs> the first one I found was in 1988 or 1989. And then by the time <laughs> Nuance had gone public and all these other kinds of things, People were saying, boy, uh, speech programmers really seem to like pizza. I don't know what it is, you know. Um, and uh, so we're preoccupied with this relatively trivial task, um, uh, ordering food or booking a, a haircut appointment. Yeah, I think the three ones are, the three is the pizza, the haircut, and also traveling from San Francisco to, uh, you know, to New York. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I hear that all the time. People right? say, just imagine if you could just say what you want, you know, mm -hmm. and I say, okay, I'm imagining it. Um, and they say, see, you just say, I want to go from Dallas to San Francisco, three o'clock. You're done. And I say, <laughs> wait a minute. I could go to a website and click Dallas, San Francisco, three o'clock. I'm done. They're like, no, 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 no. It's going to bring up 20 different flights. And now you've got to pick them and so forth. And I say, aha. The task is not a choosing, it's a comparison task. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is to be given some choices about flights and then come back with comments that say, no, that's too expensive. No, I'd rather use my frequent flyer um, preferred airline. No, I want to travel on the weekend, not on the weekday. No, it's yeah. too this, it's too that. And the intelligent application is not intelligent because it's using speech. It's intelligent because it's internal intelligence knows that what it's really doing is reducing a search space for a user that is involved in a comparison and choosing task model. And what we want to do is not model the language or the speech. We want to model the problem solving sequence 
that represents comparing and choosing tasks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then it could be applied not just to airlines, but to a wide array of other things. Right, right. Um, so uh, my, my last thought, and uh, I want to get your, your thought on it, is, is this. I, I'm starting to believe that, um, that for the next, uh, for the next uh, let's say, upgrade of where we are today as an industry, um, the challenges that we, are, we need to face are not design challenges, to be honest with you. Um, but use case uh, identification challenges. What do I mean by that? Um, I mean by that, that for example, um, booking an airline ticket or booking a trip, booking a trip is m multiple things, the airline, the car, the hotel, and other things, right? Um, is best left to be done, not on a mobile app, not on a voice, but actually on a, a desktop browser, right? That's what I, I, I never use any other medium than that because I can go, I can compare, I can pause, I can go upstairs, I can go downstairs and, and just take my time doing it right, right? Um, and usually it, takes me, it takes me half an hour to an hour. One, I used to travel. I haven't traveled for a while during the pandemic, right? Um, it, you know, so there's no, so anyone who says I'm going to build a, a voice interface with my goal being for it to go mainstream as opposed to say very specific use cases of folks who can do it, right? Is foolish in my opinion, right? Um, on the other hand, so therefore, if somebody says, I would like to build a voice interface conversational that does actually the booking, and so I'm going to solve all of these UX issues that uh, pertain to this, I'm going to solve them. I'm going to go to the gym and build my voice UX muscles, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, right? And so they go and they bone up and they, they train themselves and, they, and so forth. When in fact, I think that's just a waste of time. When in fact, what what I I think we should be doing is should be hunting for use cases where voice conversational voice is not a poor man's version of is in fact the opposite, right? It is the best way to do something, right? So use cases where your eyes uh, are free uh, are busy and, and hands are busy, obviously those lend themselves in uh, to those situations, right? So in the kitchen, the kitchen would be or the car, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or you are outside the potting plants. Or you're under, under the car doing, uh, you know, your oil change. Um, clearly, those use cases are um, also use cases where the voice itself, the, internet, the voice itself, the voice of a person, the voice of a comedian, the voice, of, you know, comedian telling a joke, right? A joke told by a comedian cannot be rendered in any other way, really, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You have to hear it, right? So I think the next upgrade is going to come from hunting those use cases finding those use cases mm -hmm. building for these use cases where the interface is totally natural and if somebody wants to do it using a mobile app that will look like a poor man's version of the uh, of the voice version of it that example i'll give you an example the example of let's say i want to memorize something right if i want to i don't know about you uh, but i used to when i was you know elementary school and beyond maybe high school too where we memorize things i don't know if you do this anymore we memorize poems, poetry, or memorize preparing for this for a quiz. I'd memorize stuff, and I would I would give my brother a sheet of paper, and I would just go up and down the room memorizing. And he would ask me the question, a question, and I answer no. Or I would, if I'm 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 learning a poem, I'm just closing my eyes and repeating, and then uh, and I look at it again and I repeat. I'm just trying without looking at anything. I don't want to see anything. I want to just memorize by repeating hearing you know talking repeating repeating till it sticks to my mind that's how um now imagine if we had uh let's say an, an you know uh an amazon uh, skill where you know uh, it, it would quiz me or it would say what's the capital of uh when did world war ii start right um and say i don't know okay in september was september 1939 right September 30 1939 right when did world war ii end Okay, 1945. Good. When did the stock market crash? 1929. Okay. Now, by, by the way, all of these things that I'm telling you, I'm discovering that young people don't know them at all. <laughs> these, base, these basic facts, right? Um, yeah, memorizing facts has gone. Memorizing facts, right? Facts so, what if I close education. my eyes? I close my eyes, right? And I'm just uh, going back and forth with a, with a, with this quiz uh, quiz thing. Uh, I don't see anything. I'm closing my eyes. I don't know about you, but when I try to memorize, I close my eyes just to focus completely on the task, right? And I'm repeating and I'm listening, okay, it's DMF and then say, okay, go to quiz mode. And it quizzes me back and forth, back and forth. And then after a while, um, I can, you know, I can go back to it if I want later on. So maybe that's an example of where conversation and voice 
um, just can't be imitated. It's it's not the same thing as looking at cards and then flipping them right comfortably. Mm. Here, there is time. Time is important, right? We're lever leveraging time. Time is the key thing. It's about, a feature. Time it's a feature. A feature. It, rather than a feature. it is not a deficiency. It's a feature. Okay, come on. Give me the answer. You can't have the answer. Okay, the answer is September yeah. 30, 1979. Next question, right? All right. Uh, so you get you get and the beauty you get, of that too yeah. is that once you build a model, then you can apply it to a wide array of different. Um, uh, this is basically a drill and practice model. That's right. So right. you have soldiers in the military that have to learn the military alphabet. So yes. I J E India Juliet Echo. Yeah, exactly. It's got to be right at the tip of your tongue, right? Right, right so there, right. Flash, Time is the machine could even take your cell phone, flash the letters on the screen, and you have to answer with the uh, military alphabet. Yeah. So it shows you a J, you say Juliet. You shows you an M, you say Mike. Yeah. As soon yeah. as you've mastered that, it moves to whole words, and you have to now say the military alphabet, spell it within a certain time frame. Exactly. And when that time gets down right. to a certain amount, you go to the next lesson and the next that's, one after that. That's right. Well, yeah. you can drill and practice language things, dialect things, dialect. a certain amount of speech language hearing where I'm trying to teach someone um, uh, how to overcome a certain kind of um, speech impediment or something yep. like that. Yep. That's talk, echo, talk, echo, talk, echo, drill exactly. and practice. And yep. a bot is perfect for that. Because yeah. it has more patience than a human teacher. Exactly. Yeah. So there you go. I mean, if if uh, you know, if, if we understand, that's why I always try to go to the fundamental, right? Which you which you have taught us, which is, you know, what are the elements of uh, of a voice interface? What are the things, the characteristics of it? The basic fundamental characteristics of it. See them as as attributes, as assets, and then go hunt for those use cases where they are assets and they're not liabilities. It seems to me that we take the use cases that work. It seems to be this is what we right like for example the hair salon right thing right they work very very well in the in the uh, you know in the in the in the GUI right and then we go and we try to struggle against all the now obstacles right of voice to create an interface that nobody will really use right so yeah. how much money and time and talent is wasted uh, trying to flex our UX muscles trying to overcome you know, uh, <laughs> things that we think are uh, liabilities when in fact, if we can find the use cases and there are tons of them, we're just mm. not applying ourselves and hopefully we will get there. We can find tons of them if we understand fundamentally what makes a voice interface different and see those characters as, as um, you know, as attributes and assets as opposed to liabilities. Absolutely. And yeah. you made me think, uh, uh, you gave me a, a, a thought uh, with that discussion that I, I, my, I instinctively think or believe, but I'm not certain, that most of the applications that you describe that are useful, the use cases, yeah. are small niche markets. Yeah, They're not broad, big money-making applications. They're individually small, and therefore, they have to be on your, on your grid. They have to be very low cost, both to build and to deploy. Yeah. And yeah. that doesn't use the state-of-the-art technology, which is way too expensive. And, yeah. and and requires huge uh, base of users to make your money back. Instead, yeah. you're going to sell it to people in wheelchairs and people that work in clinics and p uh, the military is going to have lots of small applications, farmers that want to inspect their crops, things like that. And well, I, I, we I, can't I, get there with what we've got. I think I think uh, that's where that's why I think um, you know entrepreneurs and the product managers and all that need to come in because I think there are mainstream massive right markets for you know the quizzes right all the moms the target moms out there they would like to have their kids be uh, learn the multiplication tables uh, you know effectively right without cheating without spending time on their smartphone right this is a curse for education. Right, so no smartphone in your room. You have only that uh, thing. Go ahead and learn your multiplication tables. Right, no tablets, no laptop. You have an hour. Go. Right. Um, I think that's I think it's uh, that's a massive market right there. I can see sales uh, v, uh, uh, sales VPs who are always frustrated by their sales teams not knowing the products. Right. Okay. Go enable that skill. Right. You know when you when it, that skill says that you have passed then you'll be certified and you can sell the product right i like and, it a bot as a tutor as a That's tutor a concept as a you tutor can teach the tutor all kinds of skills to tutor um, exactly but you start with one skill 
and yeah. uh, exploit that. And then uh, you mm -hmm. expand your market base by selling yeah. this voice bot into more and more tutoring models of right, environments. Right. Self-learning. Ever doing is tutoring. Yeah, it's it's self-learning, and and again, I think that there is there is this guy is a curse for education, really, right? I have seen it over and over again. The smartphone is because it's there, it's distracting, right? Um, you know, whereas whereas the uh, one of the disadvantages, which I think is not a disadvantage, it's not a liability, it's an asset, is that the the voice sucks you in. It's a hot medium, right? Right. You cannot share your attention, right? You have to listen. And you have to speak. Uh, it's like the phone or the phone, right? You cannot do, you can multitask really, right? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you can multitask in terms of things that are not thought relating, like you're, 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 you're cooking and whatever. But when it comes to if you're trying to learn, right, then it just takes your attention and you are completely immersed in that experience. Um, and so, again, I go back to the to, to my statement that I I'm, I'm still trying to think through is. Maybe what is needed is thinking of use cases a lot more than simply borrowing use cases that exist and which are completely tailored for the voice uh, for the uh, for the GUI and trying to make them incrementally better, right? Which is a sort of a losing cause. Even if you make them as good as they can be, like the one that we saw at Google, who really is going to use that thing? Like you said, right? Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm done telling this bot what this needs to do, I have spent as much energy as I, if I had made a call myself. Um, Absolutely. And that reminds me of two different thoughts. In fact, um, the idea you were saying of being totally absorbed in the task yeah. means that sometimes there are tasks that you can only really demonstrate, you know, when it's off the top of your head without distracting, without requiring your attention. Yes. Suppose Alexa had a skill where you specifically said, I'm trying to learn the multiplication tables. Yeah. And um, so at random, at various times, Alexa just says, What's 12 times eight, mm. you know? And mm -hmm. you have to give the answer very quickly, but there's not going to be a second question. Because you're not focused on multiplication tables. Yeah. You got interrupted <laughs> and had to make the decision quickly. Yeah. And Which is what I did with my son, right? right. right. Yeah. There is. Yeah. What's seven times five? Eight, five. Good. All right. Let's continue. Yeah. And okay. sometimes a father or a mother does that with the child yes. while they're working on something else. Yes. You know? Yes. It's exactly. a great way to deal with language. Yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. Alexa comes out and says, uh, Qu'est-ce que vous avez? <laughs> oh, uh, it's a, you know, it's a blah, blah, blah. No, 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 en français, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> and with a proper speech technology, she can not only hear you give the answer quickly, but appraise your pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, um, there's another one. Another one it's is a speech uh, required application. Right? Like yeah. where, you know, they say, oh, uh, you know, uh, you have an accent, so their speech recognition is not going to do well. Well, no, 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 no. Actually, the fact That's that you can. That's a feature. It can tell that you have an accent, right? And you can tell mm -hmm. you that, hey, say it again. That's better, right? Because maybe the score is better, whatever it may be, right? So if again, it has scores, yeah. If it has scores and so forth, and but that's technology that we've had for a long time, and so you know it's doable, totally doable. Um, and so maybe the strategy is this: go enumerate all the things that people complain about on speech. Oh, I have to focus, and then 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 then, then you know, and there's time pressure and so forth. Just enumerate all those. And find use cases where those are pluses, and there you go. Maybe you have a heuristic for finding um, compelling use cases. Um, yeah, so. absolutely. And you make me think of, of, of the the second thought that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of controversy in education today about standardized mm -hmm. testing mm -hmm. because it's a, a you know there's political issues, there's social yep. issues, there's learning issues, um, and there's stress and emotional issues as well. Some yep. people test better than others do, and mm -hmm. so forth. The beauty of a drill and practice tutoring model that a bot will stop calling it a voice bot. It'll be a multimedia bot yeah. mm -hmm. that can choose whichever modality is appropriate yep. for the skill at hand. The beauty is that the machine learns how much, how good you are at the skill mm -hmm. by teaching. Therefore, yeah. you don't have to give a test to the student. All you have to do is ask the bot and the bot says, you know, it's 85% out of 100. Okay, yeah. well, you got to get this guy to 90% before I'm going to graduate him. Okay, yeah, yeah. 90% yeah. it is. Yeah, and, and, and it's after at that the time. bot has drilled yeah. that student on, uh, you mentioned geography, capitals of states and countries, you know, things like that. Yeah. You got to have it right at the tip of your tongue. Bam, he just hit 90% and yep. can move to the next level. Um, he never had to go through a standardized test. Yeah, the act no, the of learning is exactly. the act of testing. 
I mean, we keep again. I mean, I think one of it's one of the the curses of uh, human beings that we keep forgetting what is the goal, as and then we get tangled up by the processes, right? You know, the goal is not to pass the exam. The goal is to learn, and passing the exam is just an indication that you have learned, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, exactly. But if the if the if the tool of assessing you is not is failing a good portion of the population, well, then we need to find another way of. Uh, but yeah. Um, anyway. So it's uh, an hour and 15 minutes, and it feels like we've been talking for 20 minutes, at least to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think we're done. <laughs> well, I think we are done. <laughs> but so thank you so much, Bruce, for uh, for a very um, lively conversation. Uh, I, I always learn from you. Um, I'll continue to learn from you. And uh, so is there a, how would people get in touch with you, follow you, um, if you want them to get in touch with you and follow you? <laughs> <laughs> social media uh, I, I do have a presence on linkedin, LinkedIn that's where okay. most people w uh, just seek me out and find me but i'm also bruce.valentine at gmail.com perfect and perfect. I, I take emails from almost everyone you won't go in my spam folder unless you start annoying me <laughs> <laughs> bruce valentine thank you very much for your time i appreciate it um very much thanks Ahmed. it was my pleasure thank you bye-bye